So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I like to repair broken front teeth on kids. In this particular case, I want to illustrate how you can create length to the teeth as well as shape the teeth to make them look a bit more ideal before a child undergoes orthodontic therapy or places his braces on. You don't always have to do this, but since it's my cousin, it's just something that I wanted to show on video, so I hope you guys enjoy it. So these are the teeth that we're working on today, and as you can see, the incisal edge, or the mesial incisal edge, have been broken down a bit. And as you can see, his teeth are a bit wide, and they do have these decalcification fluorosis spots on them, which make them look very white. So whenever I see this type of presentation with kids, uh, we do the best that we can to be conservative in our treatment. And as they get older, possibly when they're 18 or 21, we can consider options to correct for these white spots through composite or porcelain veneers, resin infiltration therapy, or some other means to make his teeth look a little bit more natural. But for today's procedure, I just wanna give the front teeth a little bit more shape and characteristic. Here you're gonna see me bevel the tooth. I'm, I'm not trying to be aggressive in my bevel, but I do wanna extend it two to three millimeters past the fracture of the tooth, and I just roughen up the surface of the tooth so that we have more surface area to allow the bonding to be very strong. And then at the very end, I do create these vertical strokes. I'm, I'm creating a star-shaped pattern to my bevel, and that allows the composite resin to blend in a little bit more naturally uh, towards the end of the procedure. And I think this close-up gives you an idea of how conservative the preparation is. You can see some of those vertical strokes uh, on the tooth, as well as how uh, the surface is a little bit more roughened. Now that's all I'm gonna do with my dental drill, but I do like to use a micro etcher which allows me to do something called air abrasion therapy, which is something I've touched on before in some videos in the past. Basically, it shoots aluminum oxide, these small particles on the tooth surface. It's a powdery-like material and um, very conservative, doesn't damage the tooth. It's merely another way to roughen the tooth surface to allow us to have a more successful outcome when we do our bonding protocol. Next, I'm applying a Teflon tape uh, in between the teeth that I'm working on. The Teflon tape helps protect the adjacent tooth to the one you're working on from chemicals like phosphoric acid etchant, which um, if left on the adjacent tooth can cause post-operative sensitivity. So it's just a means to protect the adjacent tooth. Also, you won't have any bonding getting in between the teeth, which can make it a little bit more messy uh, towards the cleanup process at the end of the procedure. Now, before I place any phosphoric acid etching, I do like to put a little bit of chlorhexidine on the tooth. That's an antibacterial agent that just helps clean the tooth, uh, gives it a very sterile environment before placing any product on the tooth. Um, so it's something that I like to do before any bonding. Now, when I apply the phosphoric acid etching, I do start beyond the prepared tooth structure, and then I work my way towards where the chip is or towards where the dentin is. Um, I don't like to start where the dentin is because it is a caustic material and it can cause sensitivity like we mentioned before. So my protocol is always to start beyond the margin uh, of the prepared tooth and then work my way towards the middle or towards the chipped surface. Of course, hit the lingual surface of the tooth because you want that bonding to wrap around the entire tooth and then give it about 15 seconds or so. Uh, if you're very superficial and superficial enamel, you can give it 20 seconds, 25 seconds, and then you're gonna wash and dry it out completely. You don't want it too dry, but you also don't want any moisture on it before you place your bonding. Now, I like to use a synthetic type brush when I place my bonding agent on front teeth. Uh, you can also use a micro brush. It really depends on the tooth you're working on. For this particular tooth, I decide to use a brush, uh, dip my brush in the bonding agent, and then flow it all over the tooth, uh, anywhere where the phosphoric acid etching touched and a little bit beyond. Uh, of course, we do air dry it thin. We don't want a thick bonding layer before you place your composite resin. So we air dry it thin 
and then we cure it and then we place our composite resin. I want to create the lingual wall first. So I lift that lingual stent uh, just a little bit, place the composite towards that lingual incisal area and then completely seat the stent. And that just pushes the composite resin towards the lingual surface uh, and it makes it better adapt to the tooth so I don't have a lot of cleanup later on. I leave my stent on and then I can take a flat ended instrument to basically create a thin, a thin lingual wall. I find that using a little bit of flowable resin adapts really nicely to the facial surface of the tooth. And then I add my standard composite resin on top of that. Now the two main instruments I like to use when shaping teeth are the flame-shaped diamond burr as well as the uh, discs. And we can do the ultra coarse disc all the way to the ultra fine disc, but when I'm shaping, I stick to the coarse discs because it allows me to refine line angles, how I want to refine them, as well as shape the incisal edge, make it flat or give it whatever shape that I want to get. In this particular case, my cousin has very broad teeth with line angles that are extended a little bit more mesial distal and I wanted to give it a little bit more rounded corners and a little bit more of a natural shape to the teeth themselves. So as you can see here, um, when I'm using my discs, I'm trying to recontour the line angles um, in a way that looks a bit more natural. Now with kids, it is hard to determine where the final incisal position is going to be. The reason I added length to him is because I know that he's worn his teeth down from his original position. So we add a little bit length and I can tell you after I, this whole set was completed, I reduced it about another millimeter with my discs. But this gives you an idea of how we can create length with composite resin. And I would always err on the side of being a little bit long because you can always cut back uh, at the end of the procedure. But if you cut too far back or you don't add enough early on, then you're stuck with the position that um, you finished at. So it's important to get the length as close to where you want it as possible or just a little bit longer so that when you're finalizing the procedure, you can cut back to uh, wherever, wherever you want to. Now, one other technique I wanted to illustrate was some of the tools that I used to uh, finish the polishing uh, during the end of the procedure. Now, what I like to do is put a little bit of aluminum oxide on the facial surface of the tooth and then use my very fine discs to polish or buffer out any of these ledges that are noticeable on the tooth. So I hope this video gives you an idea of how I create length with teeth. Um, it's important to know that composite resin does stain over time. Um, another option is always going to be porcelain veneers where uh, you can bond a porcelain veneer to the front surface of the tooth, less likely to stain. Um, so those are some options that you can consider when you wanna change the shape, color, or contour of your teeth. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.